Welcome to Board Game Coffee. I'm Mark Maya, and today we're learning how to play Batman Gotham City Chronicles, designed by Fred Henry and brought to you by Monolith. Batman is an asymmetrical game where both villain and hero players each have their own dedicated objectives. So while the good guys might be out there trying to disarm the bombs, the bad guys are out there trying to blow up the city. Now, in this game, the villain player plays alone, controlling all the bad guys on the board, while the hero team is made up of one to three players working cooperatively. As a team, the hero players share a turn, taking their moves in any order which is most efficient to them, and they can interrupt each other at any time. So there's no need to play in clockwise order. Everyone just does what needs to be done to save the day. For example, Catwoman starts by neutralizing this brute clearing a path for Batman to pass through the area safely and get to the bomb in order to neutralize it. Then, Red Hood decides to take a shot on this guy here, who is clearly looking for trouble. Ooh, unfortunately, Red Hood misses his shot, so Catwoman decides to duck into this room for cover in case the bad guy turns his attention to her. But Batman, after successfully neutralizing the bomb, won't stand for it and moves back out to attack the bad guy before they cause any more trouble. Once the hero can no longer perform any actions, or just choose not to, that ends their turn, and the villain's turn begins. Repeat this back and forth between the forces of good and evil until either one side meets their mission objective, or you simply run out of time. In Batman Gotham City Chronicles, each hero gets one of these informative little character screens and one of these cool-looking bat tablets, the latest in cardboard innovation from Wayne Electronics. Once you've selected your hero, slide it into your tablet to form your hero board. Your player board provides a wealth of information about your hero's actions, such as their melee attack, ranged attack, complex manipulations, complex thought, and movement. There's also spaces dedicated to defense and rerolling. Although those last two spaces are not considered actions. Oh, and there's also this thing. This is your stance marker. Your stance marker is placed here and indicates whether your hero is active or resting. Now, each of these spaces on your hero board have unique characteristics listed here. These characteristics will detail things like what dice are rolled when performing that action, the number of move points available to that character, and an exertion limit that indicates the maximum number of energy cubes that space can hold. The big number here indicates how many energy cubes this hero starts a mission with and each mission will dictate how many of those cubes start in your reserve zone and how many start in your fatigue zone. This third spot here is your wound zone, and as you can probably guess by the name, this is where the cubes go when you take wounds. To perform actions, you'll be moving energy cubes from your reserve zone to the action you wish to perform. So the more wounds you take, the less cubes you'll have to spend on actions. Well, until you heal up, that is, but more on that later. All right, now let's take a look at the actions available to your hero and the rules associated with them. The villains also follow these same rules when performing their actions, but their control post system works a little different than the hero's individual character board interface. But we won't get into that quite yet. Now, the first thing you should know is that an active hero, indicated by positioning your stance marker like so, can perform any of their available actions, assuming they have the available energy cubes to do so. While a resting hero, stance marker pointing this way and displaying a moon icon, can only perform defensive rolls and rerolls. Now, let's learn about the melee attack action. To perform a melee attack, you're going to have to be in the same space as your target. So first, choose your target, and then spend energy cubes from your reserve 
into your melee attack space. The number of cubes you place in this space will determine how many dice you roll during your attack. This represents the intensity of your attack. For example, let's say I'm Batman and I want to attack this brute. Now, according to this chart, each energy cube that I spend on this melee attack earns me one red die. So if I spend three energy cubes, I get to roll three red dice. And remember, you can only spend cubes on these actions up to their maximum number, indicated here. So now that I have my dice in hand, it's time to roll. Bam! Three successes. Now, some heroes like Batman here have this level one martial arts skill, which automatically adds plus one to any success that I roll. So now, instead of having to defend against three successes, the brute will have to defend against four. Not too shabby. As you can see here, the brute automatically defends two of my successes, but only requires one hit to be KO'd. It's not looking too good for the brute, so the villain player is going to try to save them by spending one energy cube into their defense and gaining them one orange die as indicated here in the defense space. The villain rolls the die, but only blocks one success. And because of Batman's plus one from his martial arts skill, this is still not enough to save the brute. So the villain, realizing that well, they have nothing else to lose, decides to reroll their die by paying one energy cube into their reroll space. Ooh, unfortunately the villain rolls the exact same thing, which means nothing changes. And since the brute has only one hit point and one of Batman's four successes was left unblocked, the brute is neutralized. Now, if this was the other way around and it was the villain attacking the hero, you would follow pretty much the same steps. But when the villain attacks, the number and color of dice rolled by the attacking character is indicated here on their character tile. Now, when a hero defends, they don't get any automatic blocks unless they have a skill that says so. A hero's defensive capabilities and rerolls appear here on their hero board. So in the case of Catwoman, the hero player would have to spend one energy cube for each defense die they want to roll. Heroes, unlike your basic brutes and thugs, have more than one life point. Their life is denoted by the number of red cubes on their hero board. So when a hero takes damage, energy cubes are moved from their fatigue zone to their wound zone for each damage they incur. If they had, say, no cubes on their fatigue zone, then you would take cubes from the spaces on either side of the board. But if those spaces are empty as well, then, and only then, do you start taking cubes from your reserve zone and placing them in your wound zone. All right, now let's discuss ranged attacks. For a hero to make a ranged attack, he'll have to have a ranged weapon and they must have a clear line of sight to their target. Also, important to note is that there's no limit on ranged weapons, so if your character can see it, they can hit it, or at least attempt to. If a villain character has a ranged attack, it will be indicated here on their character tile. To determine if a hero or villain character has a clear line of sight to their target, Draw a straight line from the white dot in the attacker's area to the white dot in the target's area. If this line doesn't cross any obstacles, you have a clear line of sight. In some cases where your line of sight does cross an obstacle, but the attacker area and the target area share a common letter, then you actually do have a line of sight. Think of it as being high enough that you're shot actually passes over the obstacles. 
or maybe your target is high enough and you can see them from down on the ground. You can find a full breakdown of each game board in the back of the mission book. This breakdown will indicate blocking walls, height levels, and anything else you need to know about the level that might not be evident on the game board itself. Oh, and any areas separated by an orange line always have a clear line of sight between them. One last thing you should know about ranged attacks is that they are affected by enemy characters standing in the same area as the attacker. So, for each enemy standing in the attacker's area, subtract that enemy's menace index from the total successes rolled by the attacker. Let me explain. Let's say the um, Red Hood here wants to make a ranged attack against this brute. Well, he's going to have to roll at least a success of 3 to overcome the brute's automatic defense of 2. But if this thug happens to be standing in the same area as Red Hood while this is happening, we have to subtract the thug's menace index from the number of successes rolled by the attacker. So, if Red Hood does roll a 3, the thug subtracts one of those successes, leaving only two remaining. Which sadly is not enough to take out the brute, which is rough but it's nothing that some good old-fashioned teamwork can't fix. Let's say for the sake of this example that Catwoman is in the same area as Red Hood when he makes his shot. In this case, her menace index of 1 would counteract the thug's menace index of 1. So now, Red Hood only has to contend with the brute's auto-defense and any additional defense dice that the villain player might decide to roll. Oh, and another thing. If the ranged attacker happens to be on higher ground than his target, they also get an elevation bonus of one yellow die when attacking. Missions in Batman Gotham City Chronicles will require you to overcome a variety of different challenges. And many of these missions will require heroes and or villains to perform a complex manipulation action. There are two types of manipulation actions. There's complex manipulations and automatic manipulations. Performing a complex manipulation is similar to performing an attack. You'll have to spend energy cubes from your reserve to determine exactly how many dice you're rolling to overcome the challenge set in front of you. So, for example, the mission description says that if a hero wants to neutralize this bomb, they're going to have to perform a complex manipulation action of six or greater. So, much like an attack, your hero would have to spend a number of energy cubes equal to the amount of dice they want to roll. Spend four cubes, roll four dice of the indicated color. And if you roll equal to or more than the amount required to neutralize the bomb, you succeed, and the bomb is removed from the board. But if there's an enemy in the same space as your hero while they're trying to neutralize this bomb, that enemy's menace index will be subtracted from your final complex manipulation roll. So in this example, Red Hood would have to roll a complex manipulation of 7. 6 for the bomb's difficulty level, and an additional 1 to account for the thug's menace index, which subtracts 1 from the total success roll. And automatic manipulations, on the other hand, are much simpler. All you gotta do is spend one energy cube into your manipulation space and you automatically pass. No need for any dice rolling, and you're not affected by the hindering of any enemies in your space. Automatic manipulations are often used when transferring items between heroes. Some missions will put challenges in front of you that require a complex thought action. Complex thought actions work the same way as complex manipulation actions, except that you spend energy cubes into this space instead of this one. Mission descriptions will clearly indicate if a particular challenge will require a complex thought or complex manipulation action. 
Complex manipulations are used for challenges that involve disarming a bomb or cracking into a safe, while complex thought actions are reserved for more brain-taxing challenges like hacking into a computer. And just like a complex manipulation action, complex thought actions are also hindered by an enemy's menace index. So if Catwoman is trying to hack into this computer, this thug here will subtract one success from her role. And just like before with the automatic manipulation, the automatic thought action always passes. All you gotta do is pay one energy cube into your thought space, no dice rolling required. And it's not affected by an enemy's menace index. Batman Gotham City Chronicles is played across a variety of different game boards. And each of those boards is broken up into many little areas, which are denoted by these orange and white lines, as well as walls and other large objects depicted in the art. A full breakdown of all the parts that make up a particular game board can be found in the back of the mission book for easy reference. Moving from one area to another costs one move point but this cost can be increased by an enemy's size index, indicated here on the villain tile and here on the hero screen. Difficult terrain can also increase the cost of leaving an area. If an area has a difficult terrain of, say, level 1, then your cost to leave this area will be increased by that much. So for Batman to move out of this space, it would cost him two movement points instead of one. Where do you get movement points, you ask? Well, both heroes and villains each get a move point bonus for the first move that they make each turn. This bonus is indicated here on the hero screen and here on the villain tiles. Now, it's important to note that this move bonus only gets applied when a hero or villain makes their first move each turn. Any unused move bonus is lost. So, if you have a move bonus of two, and you only move one space then perform an action, you don't get to spend the rest of that bonus to move again. That bonus for that miniature is gone for the rest of this turn. And for the hero, this movement bonus can actually be decreased if they're carrying too much stuff, as indicated here by their encumbrance value. For example, this revolver here has an encumbrance value of 1. So, if Red Hood was carrying this revolver, and a number of other items with an encumbrance value totaling 4 or 5, then his move point bonus would be reduced from 2 to 1. If at any point he's carrying items totaling 6 encumbrance, which is the maximum number of items he can hold, his move point bonus would be reduced to 0. Let's take a look at a movement example. Let's say Red Hood wants to get to this bomb, which is three spaces away. Being that this is his first move this turn, he gets the movement bonus of two, which gets him as far as this area here, containing one enemy. Now, since this enemy has a size index of one, I'll have to spend one extra movement point to leave that area. But since I have no bonus points left, I'll have to pay two energy cubes to leave the area. In this game, you'll notice that there's a lot of different elevation levels, and the Crime Alley game board is the best example of this. Rooftops, ground level, and stuff in between. If you want to move between these areas, you'll have to perform a special movement. The exact requirements to move from one of these areas to another is outlined in detail in the board game rules located at the end of the mission book. Now, let's look at an example of moving to and from elevated terrain. Batman here is at a higher elevation than this enemy. So, although they might look like they're standing next to each other, they are actually on two completely different floors. So, if Batman wants a piece of this thug, he's going to have to go down there to get it. And to do that, he has two options. He can either fall or climb down. And as you can probably guess, climbing is a much more safer method of travel, and it can be done in both directions. There's no falling up. 
The cost of climbing this particular wall is listed in the game board rules for this map in the back of the mission book. And as you can see here, the height value of this wall is 2. Which means if Batman wants to climb down this wall, it's going to cost him an additional 2 movement points to do so. Which brings his total movement cost to 3. Now, if 3 points sounds like a little much, you can choose just to fall down which works like a simple movement, and only costs one movement point. Oh, and if there is an enemy in the space you're falling from, don't forget to include their size index into the cost of moving out of that area. Same goes for the climb and other special moves. Now, falling might be the most cost-effective option, but there is a downside. You see, if you fall, you need to roll for damage. When a hero or villain character falls, they need to roll a number of yellow dice equal to the height of the fall. So, since this wall has a height value of 2, Batman would need to roll 2 yellow dice to see how much damage he incurred from the fall. Roll 3 successes, take 3 wounds. Now, it's important to note that you don't roll defense dice against a fall. A fall is not an attack. Although, if you do have the energy to spend in your reroll space, you do have the option of rerolling those yellow dice. At the end of the hero's turn, and at the end of the villain's turn, all hero characters retrieve their energy cubes from the spaces on the outer perimeter of their card and return them to their fatigue zone. Any cubes in the reserve zone or wound zone stay right where they are. At the beginning of the hero's turn, each hero will have to declare if they are active or resting. So in this example, if Batman is set to an active stance, he will recover two energy cubes from his fatigue zone to his reserve zone. But if he's set to resting stance, he recovers six energy cubes instead. And if you don't have enough energy cubes in your fatigue zone to complete this transfer, just take the remainder cubes that you require from your wound zone and move them into your fatigue zone. Now, let's take a closer look at the villain side. Unlike the hero player, the villain player doesn't choose a board for their characters, but instead has this real cool command post to rule them all. The most important part about the command post is the river, this area down here. The river is used to command your characters by activating their tiles. To activate a tile, the villain will have to spend an amount of energy cubes equal to its location in the river. So, the first tile in the river will cost you one energy cube to activate, as indicated on your command post here while the third tile in the river will cost you three cubes to activate, and so on. Energy cubes spent in this manner are moved from your reserve zone to your fatigue zone, and any tile you activate is removed from its current location and placed at the end of the river, shifting all tiles to the left, which in turn decreases the activation cost of every other tile. The villain can activate up to two tiles per turn. When they do activate a tile, they are activating every character associated with that tile. And they can do so in any order they wish. But when you've moved on from activating one character to the next, there's no going back to assign actions to the previous character. So think your turn out carefully. Activated characters can move at the start and end of their activation. They can also attack and perform complex thought and manipulation actions, as long as those traits are indicated on the card's tile. So in short, an activated villain can move, perform an action, and move again. And just like the hero characters, villains also benefit from the move bonus, indicated here on their tile. The villain can also buy more move points for the character that is currently activated by spending energy cubes on the movement space here. These three spaces across the middle of the command post represent additional actions that the villain can perform by spending energy cubes. You might recognize these icons from the hero boards. Defense, reroll, 
and where you buy extra moves. The maximum number of cubes you can place here is easily denoted by the spaces available. This section here is your life track. Now, most villain characters are low-life nobodies with only one hit point. So this track isn't for them. This track is for your more formidable characters, like Killer Croc or Joker or Poison Ivy. Characters that need more than just one hit to take down. Bane, for example, starts with six life points. Now, by now you've probably noticed this tile here. This is your event tile, and it's function changes from one mission to the next. But most of the time it produces reinforcement points, which allow me to bring back previously neutralized characters. Speaking of which, if all the characters associated to one tile are neutralized, instantly flip that tile to its neutralized side and move it to the end of the river. If one of those characters manages to return, then flip the neutralized tile back to its non-neutralized side. At any point during their turn, the villain player can choose to dredge the river by removing any number of neutralized tiles from it, thus decreasing the activation cost of the other tiles. When dredging the river, the villain must permanently remove two energy cubes from their fatigue zone for each tile removed this way. Another option to the villain is demobilization. Demobilization can be performed once per game and allows the villain to remove one non-neutralized henchman or elite tile from the game. A tile's level is indicated here by these stripes. One stripe represents a henchman tile and two stripes represents an elite tile. When demobilizing a tile, remove the tile from the river any associated miniatures from the board and permanently remove two energy cubes from the fatigue zone. The upkeep step for the villain is performed at the beginning of the villain's turn, at which point all energy cubes located in these three spaces are removed and placed into the fatigue zone. Since these cubes are only retrieved from these spaces at the beginning of the villain's turn, the villain player is at a bit of a disadvantage during the hero player's turn, because those unmoved cubes, like so, would be taking up valuable spaces to defend and reroll dice. But once the time does come to move all your energy cubes into your fatigue zone, it's time to recharge your reserves. The number of cubes that the villain player moves each turn from their fatigue zone to their reserve zone is indicated here. Keep in mind that this recharge rate is also mission specific. In Batman Gotham City Chronicles, all the information you need to start a mission can be found here in the mission booklet. And it looks a little something like this. The mission title with some story text to set the mood. A setup diagram that shows you where to place all the bits, such as miniatures, cards, tokens, etc. Basically everything that should be on the board at the beginning of the game. So on this map, you would place a brute with chains here, the owl with handgun here, bomb tokens, reinforcement tokens, and these areas here, marked with this computer icon, get these little miniature computer consoles. Continue placing tokens and miniatures until you've recreated the scenario laid out in the mission booklet. You should end up with something that looks like this. Now that that's done, you've probably noticed these numbered areas here, here, and here. These are locations where your heroes are placed when you start a mission. So in this case, if I selected Batman as my first hero, he would start in this area here, marked first. Same goes for your second and third heroes. This here is a list of things you'll need throughout the mission. Now, some of these items have already been placed when we set up the map. The listed items that you haven't placed should be placed nearby so you have them when you need them. Like the bomb miniatures, you need these, but you don't need them on the board until a bomb has been primed. So having them nearby will save you from rummaging through the box later. This blue icon here tells us that in this mission, the heroes have initiative, meaning they start first. If this icon was gray, it would mean that the villain player starts first. 
The mission description will also list the mission's endgame conditions. As soon as these conditions are met, the game ends immediately. In this mission, for example, the game ends at the end of the hero's seventh turn, or when four bombs have been neutralized. When an endgame condition is met, take a look at the victory conditions listed here. The victory conditions in this mission state that if there's only one bomb primed or no bombs primed, the heroes win. But if there are two or more bombs primed, the villains win. Earlier in this video, I mentioned selecting my first, second, and third hero. Well, here on the second page of the setup, you'll find a listing of all available heroes for this mission. Now, you can't just select any three heroes from that list. You have to select one hero from each grouping. So, in this mission, for my first hero, I have the option of choosing either Batman or Rene Montoya. For my second hero, I can choose from either one of these Catwoman variations or Bluebird. Repeat this process for the third hero and you'll have yourself a full team. Now, this next part is a bit of a two-parter. This number on your hero board indicates how many energy cubes that this particular hero starts with. For now, let's place those energy cubes in your reserve zone. This number here tells me that each hero needs to move five energy cubes from their reserve zone into their fatigue zone. So my hero's starting cubes would look something like this. The mission setup also gives you all the information you need to set up the villain's command post. In this example, the villain's recovery rate is set to 5. There should be 9 energy cubes placed in their reserve zone, and 2 cubes placed in their fatigue zone. And this list here tells you which tiles you need to place in the river and which order. Any characters listed here on the side are not placed in the river, nor are their miniatures placed on the board. Both the tile and the miniature should be set aside until it's time to be placed, and the mission dialog will tell you exactly when that should be. This bit of text here describes events that the villain will be able to activate on their turn. Activating an event is just like activating any other tile. Pay the cost listed here, move the tile to the end of the river, and perform the action detailed in the mission description. In cases where there's more than one event available, the villain will have to choose one of those options. And last but not least, the mission-specific rules. These rules here will tell you what the villain has to do to prime a bomb and what the hero has to do to disarm it. So in this example, the villains need to be in the same area as the bomb and roll a complex manipulation of three to prime it. It also tells you to replace the bomb token with the miniature if they're successful. The rules also tell us that the villain character can activate a bomb remotely by walking up to a computer terminal and rolling a complex thought of three. Heroes, on the other hand, can neutralize these computers by being in the same room as them and rolling a complex action of three. If the heroes are in the same area as a bomb miniature, meaning that it's primed, they can attempt a complex manipulation of six to neutralize it. And there you have it. If you've been watching along, then you should be all ready to hop into your first game. But if you want to see the game in action, stay and watch us play To Sink a City. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark Maya, and this is Board Game Coffee. And remember, have fun, keep gaming, be social. Welcome to our playthrough of To Sink a City. Now, in To Sink a City, the villains, played by Chris, are planting bombs under City Hall and trying to detonate them to bring the building down. And as the hero, I'm out there trying to neutralize these bombs before it's too late. So, we have until turn 7 as the heroes to neutralize the bombs. Now, here's how it works. When Chris primes a bomb, we replace one of these tokens with the bomb miniature. Now, by the end of turn 7, if there's two or more of these left on the board, Chris wins. The villains are victorious. But, if there's one or less of these, then the heroes win. So, I think with that, let's get started. Now, in this mission, the heroes have initiative, so I'll be going first. All my heroes will be active, being that this is the first turn. So let's move two cubes. Batman is going to, he's up here. He's gonna get, he wants to get in the action, so I'm gonna be 
One, use my parkour to go down this wall. Two, three, four. He's gonna stop there. So I've got a movement bonus of two, so I have to pay an additional two to cover the difference. I'm in that space with that thug, and I think I'm gonna punch that thug in the face. So, all right. So Batman, I'm gonna pay one energy cube to get one red die. He's also carrying a taser. So he gets to roll a bonus orange die. And I think two of these are enough to take out that punk. Oh, good luck. Four. Ooh, four. Oh. He's got an armor of one, so I have to roll a... Th oh, hold on. Four. And Batman also has the martial arts skill, which adds plus one to any success. So since I have a success of four, martial arts skill bumps that up to five. That's too much for him to protect. <laughs> him, he's just going to walk away. It's best. It's for the best. Yeah. All right. One thug down. <clears throat> it's going well. This is going well. Uh, I think Batman's going to continue this tirade. <laughs> he's going to go one, two. Now that he's in here, now he's in bed with all these guys. I'm looking at that thug right there. And I'm going to punch him in the face, too. Hopefully he doesn't go as easy. All right. So, once again... One red die for Batman, and one orange for his taser. Ready? One, oh, two, two plus the martial arts is three. Because he has an armor of one as well. But hold on, I'm going to pay one to re-roll this red. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ooh. three! So altogether I got five plus my martial arts, that's six. Oh, defend that. No, that's, that's too much to defend. Okay. He's going to go away too. Okay, so we got we got an arm th like a arm <coughs> thug and a and a crowbar crowbar thug. Yes. Okay, so <coughs> got them down. Now see, Chris here has got in his river, the first character is a thug, so or the ar it's the one with the guns, right? The guns. Yes, the one you just took it. The gun toting thugs. So if I thin the herd on those, when he activates that tile, he'll have less characters to control, which is my hope. Okay. Plus, those guys are the ones that arm the bombs as well. Yes. So let's get them off the board. All right, now... I... Why am I giving you advice? <laughs> <laughs> so Catwoman's going to try something different. She's going to go one, two, and three. Now, here's the thing with Catwoman. Catwoman has a parkour of three, so she completely ignores that wall, where Batman only got a discount there. And she also has elusive, which means she passes through spaces containing enemies, uh, up to two enemies, without any additional cost. So now, I'm in there. And you know what? I'm gonna get that gun-toting thug. Mm. But, oh yeah, I don't have to pay anything, because her bonus is three. She only moved three. She's gonna get her claws out, so she's gonna spend two yellow die, and she's gonna get an additional yellow die because of her claws. And I get to re-roll two of these. Ready, thug face? Oh, that's a lot of die. Bam! Oh! Yes. But I get to reroll two of them. I okay. get to reroll okay. two of them. Okay, well, let's get start. Oh, two. two. That's still, he still has to defend one. Uh, does she have martial arts? Oh, she does have martial arts. So three. Thank you. Thank you. So three. Okay. That I think we can defend. So I'm going to defend with one orange. Beating on doing two, but I think we can do it right here. No, oh, nothing. You can pay to reroll. Let's try one more time. I like that though. Pay to reroll. No, oh, oh, nothing. Again. Nothing again. Oh, okay, he, he 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 just he. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, nothing. Okay, yeah. so now I went into the two rooms with the bombs, and I took <clears throat> away the people who can actually prime those bombs, which mm -hmm. is, is good. But now. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're going to jump over to Red Hood here for a bit. So it's going to cost Red Hood um, two to leave this area because it's difficult terrain. So it's got a difficult terrain cost of one. So it costs him an additional one. So that's two, three, because it was parkour, and four. So he's got a bonus of two, so he needs to pay two movement to cover the difference. And then I'm going to pay one energy cube in a manipulation action to pick up this minigun. But now this minigun, you see, 
has an encumbrance value of six, which is the max amount that Red Hood can carry. So I'm gonna have to drop my revolver, but I think that's a fair trade. It's a big gun. I'm just gonna rip through Chris's characters here. Mm. So let's see what we're gonna do, Chrissy. I think you've already done enough damage. Just back off a bit. Let's see. I think we're gonna go here and see what damage we can do. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna pay one to move there. And I'm gonna pay one to take a shot with my new minigun. Let's play with my new toy. So I get one red die normally with a ranged weapon, and I get two additional red die because of my minigun. And because I'm at an elevated terrain, I get a bonus yellow die. Ooh. Oh, so many bullets. Ooh. All right, ready? Yeah. Oh, we got here. okay. So wow. we go. Oh, that's a good one. So two, five, four. six, seven. Ooh. Seven. It's mighty. Oh, you know what? I could. I'm gonna re-roll that red one. I can. You know, I could get a zero, but you know, I think I could get more. Mm. That'd be great. Oh, same thing. Okay, nothing happened. <laughs> okay, good. So seven. All right. So he's got a armor of one. Not even gonna yeah, attempt to. Don't even attempt. No, to. I would not. So that accounts for two of my bullets. So now I still have five bullets. I want to attack this thug right there because he's. I got line of sight on him. He's a little tougher. He's got armor of two. So he still has to defend against three. <laughs> now he also has martial arts skill, but that doesn't help him when shooting a gun. Martial arts is only mm -hmm. for close up melee attack. Yeah. If you can pass me, please. Yeah. Thank you. Mind you, Chris's character, the uh, owl with the handgun, these guys, they do have the equivalent of martial arts for handguns because they have Mark. they have marksmen, which gives them plus one for that. Okay, so so, that was three so I only have one bullet left. No, that was three. So I only have two I have two bullets left, but I can only hit a small guy if I could see him. Oh, and I think I have a clear line of sight from that dot to that dot through these subway cars. Yes, it looks like. So I'm taking out. I'm gonna try to take out that guy. So you you have to defend one. I'm gonna defend with him. Okay, so Chris is rolling an orange die. Yes. Oh, he blocked it. One success. He wow. saved. He blocked it. Blocked Whew. it. Finally saved one of my guys. Okay. Jeez. It's been a slaughter. And we're not done yet. Mm. Okay. So let's see what other damage we can do here. Um. Hmm. I think Catwoman's gonna take another attack at somebody. At somebody, Catwoman is gonna spend two more cubes into her melee attack, and she's gonna use her claws, which gives her one more yellow. And I'm gonna attack the owl. If I had another character in there, he wouldn't be able to attack the owl because he has protected. But there's not another character there to help me out, so he's all free game. Bam! Oh, three. three. That's so bad for yellow dice. That's so, so bad. He's got an armor at two. So you've only got to defend one. I think I can do that. Oh, he does it. One success. He does it. I should have re-rolled. I could have re-rolled nothing, so maybe not. Okay. All right, fine. So Catwoman's done. She's putting her claws away. And you know what? I think my guys are going to stick there. So at the end of my turn, I return all my used... Energy cubes to my fatigue zone. Yep, it was there. <clears throat> and now it is Chris's turn. Okay. And Chris <clears throat> returns his cubes at the beginning of his turn to his fatigue zone. And then recharges an equal number to, or an equal rate to that number. Which is five in this case. So there we go. Okay. So we're going to activate these thugs. There at the beginning, so they cost me one. How many thugs you got on the board to activate? You got quit. What did I kill there? Only one. two of them. No, the gun? The guns. Yep, you got two of them. Oh, I did. You I did. did. I got two well, of them. I got some over by some bombs over here, so we're going to try to gotta get some bombs happening here. So, one. He has a movement of two, so that's easy enough. We're gonna try activating that bomb. And what is it I need to activate this bomb? Uh, so Chris has got to roll a complex manipulation action of three for this mission. So my character rolls an orange and a white. And to get three successes. 
Ooh. Oh, that's a fail. You can pay to re-roll. Yes, let's do that. I'm going to pay to re-roll. Probably both. both. <laughs> I encourage Chris to spend his energy cubes. <laughs> yes, yes you do. Oh! Oh, oh. oh you want to pay to re-roll that white one? Mm. Oh, man. I think you should just let the bomb be, yes. Chris. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try with this guy. It's like, if you can please move him into that bomb area. I will. Done. Let's try with him. He looks like a little smarter. He can, he can do this one. He's got it. He's got it right oh, here. Oh, cut the red wire. Oh, oh. It's even worse. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> oh. Oh. These guys are not oh. so good at the <laughs> bomb. At the bomb priming. <laughs> Which one's the red oh. wire? Oh, that was that was bad. Bane okay. is going to be upset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you had one job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Crap. Okay. Okay. Go there and push the red button. <laughs> That's all you had to do. Let's go with. Hmm. I'm gonna activate my brutes. Keep it cheap for me. Mm -hmm. See if they can swing around. We still have three of those left on the board. Yes. What are they gonna do? Hmm. I only have really one by Cavern, so it's not really. Let's. Let's go with Owl instead, actually. Oh, so that's gonna cost you two energy cubes. Two. All right. Okay. So. I'm going to start with Batman there. <laughs> You've made a mistake, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so you get some orange and yellow. Now, Batman has the Bat Cape, which is going to automatically block one of these attacks. Because it automatically blocks one ranged attack. Okay. Let's see what you got. Three. Oh, that's respectable. Bad, that's okay. respectable. So, well, Batman, I'm not going to pay for extra def defensive die. But and I got marksmanship as well. Oh, right. So, so it's four, four out of block. Hmm. Go out. Okay, well, the range automatically blocks one of them. But I still have to block three. three. I'm going to just roll one, <laughs> one orange die. Uh, for a billionaire, he's poor on energy. He's, <laughs> right now. he's tired. I don't want to spend the one. Uh, do I? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost one. I still took two damage. All right. All right. Let's try Catwoman here. Okay. Catwoman also has um, Untouchable, is what the ability is called. She also has Untouchable, so she does the same thing. She's going to yeah. automatically defend one of those bullets. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, two. Wait. I'm going to reroll that. What are you going to reroll? That one. I'd recommend the orange one. Of course you would. <laughs> no! Oh! Nothing. Oh, two. So sad. Uh, well, so three then. Uh, three, damn it. I keep forgetting My, about the marksmanship. stupid marksmanship ability. All right, so I have to block three. Yep. Um, well, you rolled a three, right? No. Oh, no, you rolled, sorry. Two, but then marksmanship gives me three. Yeah, but she automatically defends one of those. Oh. Because she has um, untouchable. So I have to defend two. Okay. So, she rolls an orange die to defend your two. Yeah. Oh, yes. again! Nothing. Nothing. Defensive rolls are not falling no. my way. I paid for that, too. I paid for that one die. <laughs> now you feel my pain. Okay. All right. I think I'm done. So, I've activated two characters. All right. At the ending of the villain's turn, I also, or at the beginning of my turn, I return my spent energy cubes, which is the only one, to my fatigue. And now we move the turn marker and got to make a decision to rest or not to rest. Yeah, some tired characters. Like Red Hood that. is not going to rest. Red Hood is not going to rest. Batman. You know, Batman's not going to rest either. And Catwoman's not going to rest. Nobody rests oh. today. Oh. Nobody rests. Are you today. sure about that? Uh, okay. We're going to cause some damage though. So Batman is going to take a shot at is uh, not the owl. No. You know what? I want the shotgun brute. Ooh. Shotgun brute. Oh, he always pointing defensive that gun at two. me. So he's got a defensive two. So I roll also a red counterattack. Just so you're aware. Oh. So he's only got a counterattack if he's standing. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> so True. I roll two die against him. Because I got my taser. Zap. Ready? Yeah. Oh! Nothing. Hold on. Duh. 
I can reroll nothing for free. All right, so um, yeah, let's reroll that because I believe you still get a chance to counterattack me. <laughs> so I'm gonna reroll both of those because <laughs> I don't want this guy counterattacking me. Oh, four, Ooh. much better, much better, Ooh. much better. Ooh. So I paid to reroll those, got four. And so with your martial arts, that's it's five. five. Correct. Ooh. And the last roll where I rolled blanks, the martial arts would not kick in. You have to do at least one success for anything to happen. I don't have a lot of energy, so I'm not going to waste it. Because that would be quite a bit. Yeah, that would uh, be. Yes. Uh, Get out of there. Uh, so now, Catwoman's going to do something different. Catwoman's going to go for a jog. She's going to run over here. One, two, three, four. Because Again, because of her elusive... She ignores the cost of all those guys when move, moving through those spaces. So, uh, but she did go four, and her move bonus is three. So she's paying one for the additional. And now she's in there. She's going to try to disarm that bomb. There is an enemy in there with her, so his hinder... If Batman wasn't in there, she'd be hindered by him. But since Batman is in there, he's basically holding him down as she's cutting the wires. Let's see if she can figure this out. So she's got the munition specialist. So Catwoman, instead of normally, we would have to roll a complex manipulation of six to disarm a bomb. But since Catwoman has a, has a munition specialist level one ability, she gets a discount of one. So she only needs to roll a five. See if she's smarter than my guys and she can actually do something with that bomb. Rolling a five is a lot harder than rolling a three. <clears throat> That's true. Okay, so I'm going to use all, I'm going to use three, all her remaining energy cubes. Ooh. Try to roll a five. Ooh. Risky. But she rolls reds. Reds are good. Okay. Don't! Now when they roll oh! it, I don't have a four. Ah, uh, I didn't leave myself anything to re-roll. Mm. That's oh. a shame. That's a shame. Da. Ba. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. That was no bueno. <laughs> no. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Let's mix it up here. If you guys weren't such cowards, you could come out in the open mm. where I could actually do some damage to you, but you're a bunch of cowards and you're all <laughs> hiding. So I'm Red Hood is going to go... Trying to figure out the bomb. One, two. And he's got a line of sight on this. Yes. Your crowbar-wielding thug there. So he's going to try to minigun him in the face with three, four die. Ready? Ready. Minigun power. Oh! Just take him off the board. Five, six, seven. Ooh, Let's see, yeah. He's just a splatter. <laughs> yeah. There is nothing left of him. No. I rolled a seven, seven. on that. Yeah, six, Ouch. Seven. And these two were more than enough. <laughs> yeah. I still have five remaining, but I don't know if I can see anybody from where I am. Because these guys are in the subway car. That guy's behind that room. Wait, and this guy, I don't got a clear line of sight because of this. I can see. From there, I can see here, mm. but I can't see here. So... Because in questioning, can I see from there to there? There's a question because of the subway car, but there's a G here and a G here, so that means I can see him looking over the subway car. But this guy must be hidden because there's no letter G there, and the line does cross over those two. So, hmm. So I got no one else to shoot because um, the mini gun has the burst ability. So that's why when I fire once with the mini gun, I can target different people. Because normally you can't do that. You need to have that burst ability. That's a shame. All those bolts for nothing. You're lucky. Yes. I'll take it. You're lucky. Okay. I guess that's the end of my turn. So, uh, reset my energy cubes. Put them back in my fatigue zone from the spaces they were in. Get one more on Batman. And, oh yeah. Okay. Right. I'm good. What do you got? Do the same with mine. Move my five over. Okay. Well, let's start off with using my event card. So that allows me to have five recruitment points, or five recruitment points, and inject Bane. Inject Bane, do it. Bring oh, it. for sure. Bring the Bane Bane. Let's see where is there he is. So let's, it's just a beast. Don't forget to switch his card, yeah. So now Bane is all jacked up on uh, Venom. 
on his venom juice. <laughs> so he's stronger, but he's not as smart as he was. Now, it seems a little more challenged to activate bonds. And I'm going to put some guys. Let's go. So, so with the five recruitment points Chris just activated, he's got to spend those now. So if you put that one by the computer, please. So that's one. Um, and so on all locations he can spawn those characters are these reinforcement areas with the green swirly arrows. Three. And each one of these thugs cost one reinforcement point to bring in. His brutes cost two. Bring one tough guy for two to finish this off. Let's go with... Yes. Four or five. All right. I'm confident we can start. Okay. Now I'm going to activate the thugs with crowbars for two. Ooh. I did not pay for that yet. That was two. Oh. Was, what? There we go. Paid my scammer. two. Scammer. No, scammer. <laughs> I'm going to pay another two to activate these thugs. I shall pay right now. I see you watching them. You can't <laughs> trust the villains. You can't trust the villains. Yeah, we win. Okay. So let's try to see these thugs uh, with crowbars. They have to go to computers. That's why he always plays the villain. He's a natural <laughs> cheat. <laughs> gotta do what I gotta do. So, one into there. Let's see how these guys are. So, one yellow and one white. And I can reroll the white if needed. So, he's gonna try to prime a bomb from this computer. Oh, oh nothing. But he needs to roll a three. Oh. And you know what's not a three? Mm -hmm. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was not supposed to happen. I am just not having any luck with this. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. Well, don't move him to another space there. Oh, is that? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, it is. It's a space that's a wall. You can't just be walking through walls. You're not a ghost. You're a thug. <laughs> Let's try with... Oh, I could re-roll the white, but... Let's see. Are you going to... I'm allowed to re-roll it by... Uh, is there even three on that dice? No, no, I don't think so. Either way, it's nothing. Just like... Okay. Let's try with that thug down there. So he's going to move into the subway car first, I'm assuming. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, let's do From that. From here, it looks like it's a... Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys aren't so bright. This is, oh! oh! Nothing. Again. I mm. wouldn't bother re-rolling that white because the most you could roll on one white is ah. two. So, so let's pay to re-roll the yellow and I'll re-roll the white. For free. That's right. Okay. Let's see what this does. Come on. <laughs> Seriously, nothing again. Oh, this is not good. Uh, Chris is, is not Chris good. has rolled better. So have I actually. I, I haven't done very good at disarming these no. bombs. Um, I I don't know what to say right now or what to do. This is not supposed to happen. Um, uh, you you but, have at least one left on the board, right? Yeah, this guy. Now, how many movements would I need to get out of there? Because he's got some rough terrain. No, nope, there's. Difficult terrain. I don't think there is. There's no difficult terrain. terrain. In that area. That's this zone here. That is for this zone here. He's got to go oh, around to get to... Oh, no, he's got to go here. Well, he's got to go as one, two, three. But you'd have to pay one additional movement point to get him in there. Three, what's he got? He's got... Oh, he moves... He has three movements. Oh, Look he does. That. Look at that. One, two, three. Okay. I can't they keep got... track of all the villains' movement points. <laughs> okay. We've got two of them now. They're, okay. they're talking. They're conversing. They've got a plan. And... Oh, well, it's rolled a two. two. He needs one more. I'm going to pay to re-roll my yellow. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, yes. he did it! He yes. did it! Okay, with that computer, I'm going to activate a bomb that's nowhere near you. Let's go with this guy. Seems kind of a waste of a remote bomb to just <laughs> trigger the one that's behind you, two feet behind you. <laughs> like, hold on, let me log on, send the signal to the satellite, satellite right here, behind me. That's pretty much what happened, yes. But I'm not lugging this area. I'm going to stay away from it. All right, so let's remove this computer out of here, because you don't get to use that one again right, once you've um, okay. primed a bomb with it. Um, and that is all my facts. Yeah, so that's my two cards moved. I am done for this turn. All right. So we're going to end this demonstration here. And I think that should give you an idea of what to expect going into Batman Gotham City Chronicles. And with uh, what you've seen here and all the instructional videos we've done before that, you should have enough information to get started. So hope you enjoy the game. It's great. But remember to 
plan ahead. Batman doesn't just go in there swinging and rolling dice. He can, but it's not going to work out. You got to plan. Choose your heroes carefully. Go in there. Know what he's up to. Know your enemy. And defeat him. Crush him. And have good dice rolls. <laughs> Definitely good dice rolls. Don't do what I just did. All right. Well, that's it. Again, thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Maya. This is Chris Medeiros. And this is Board Game Coffee. And remember, have fun, keep gaming, be social.